Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to another Tick Hunter tutorial video. In this video, what we're going to be doing is adding the next two exchanges of tick data, um, and then we'll start adding in the rest of uh, the information. So the tick data has kind of got to be pretty customized, whereas the rest of the information, we're going to normalize it from CFBTC's uh, API. So, uh, so now let's go ahead and add another exchange. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and just take all of this here, and we're going to do copy come down here underneath uh, bitstamp, enter, 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 and uh, delete once, paste. And now instead of BTCE, we're gonna do uh, Bitfinex. And Bitfinex also is going to have some changes. Uh, it does have a limit, however, so we'll leave that there. Uh, and this Bitfinex is HTTPS colon slash slash API dot Bitfinex dot com slash V1 slash trades uh, slash BDC USD and then the variable is limit. Okay, um, that's basically it again uh, just like before Bitfinex does not do the whole BDC USD colon basically you specified BTC USD up here. So we're just going to comment that out. We don't really need that. In fact, we can just delete it. There's no reason to have it there at all. Uh, next, uh, we're going, they call, uh, instead of bid and ask, they use buy and sell. So we'll rename those. Now uh, we're going to come down to volume uh, like before. Uh, they do use amount, but we need to apply uh, float and then convert it to list to actually use it and then again now this is bitfinex down here bitfinex down there and uh, they display newest to oldest as well so that'll be the zeroth element that we care about and that should be it so let's go ahead and save and run that man i got itchy neck for some reason it's like getting really dry out here uh i've been real itchy Agree, and let's pick uh, Bitfinex. Okay, so this is the Bitfinex information. Some serious volatility down here. Oh, wow. And back up. Got price, volume, all that. Oh, shoot. You know what? Mm. I just realized we have not been uh, disabling our axes. Okay, so we need to add in some code here. Uh, so let's go ahead and scroll up uh, to the top where we have BDCE. And uh, basically right here where we, we're modifying the x-axis. Uh, if you didn't see, I shouldn't have closed it out. Um, we are showing basically the dates here and here. Well, as I said, as we zoom in, um, it zooms in together, so there's actually no no need uh, to show the dates twice there. And as you can see, there's a little bit of overlap. That looks kind of bad. So let's go ahead and fix that really quick. Um, so to do that, what you do is you can say plt.setp, and then we say a, because that's the top one. So we want to remove the x-axis entirely from the top one, or at least the labels. So a.get underscore x tick labels. Um, and then empty parameters, and then we're just going to say visible equals false, and that will make them not visible. So now, when we go look at this, you can see they're just they're gone. So uh, let's go ahead and close this, and when you want to apply this uh, to anyone that does not have two axes, so or does have two axes rather, so Bitstamp does, and so does Bitfinex. So we'll just apply those. Done. Fabulous. Now we're going to work on uh, the Huobi exchange. Now, um, from what I know, the Huobi exchange is a little uh, less API friendly. I think you can get, you could do the uh, the streaming like socket API. I don't really want to get into that here, so we're just going to use the data from uh, C of BTC. So, um, so let's just go ahead and add that just in case the user happens to click Huobi, uh, there will be something there for them. So uh, we're gonna say now if exchange equals uh, hu -o Huobi, can't spell it all, Huobi. 
If that is the case, uh, we are going to make a plot. So I'm going to copy this A equals PLT, paste. But instead of row span 5, it's a row span of 6. Next, our data set is going to come uh, from C of BTC. So we'll copy this, and we'll come down here and paste and change the link here. It is HTTP colon slash slash C of BDC dot com slash API slash basic slash price uh, question mark and key. Uh, for now, just put key equals one. That will get you through. No problem. And TF for time frame equals uh, one day and exchange equals and here uh, what we do is plus program name so this is the name the lowercase version of Huobi so that will be uh, the data that we uh, or the data link rather um, and in fact let's just do uh, data equals and then url lib.request.url open. And then we're going to open that bit. And now let me just get to the very end here. So plus program name, close off there, period, read. So we'll read the data. Now, if you're not too familiar, the part of the problem with reading data off of like websites and stuff like that in Python 3 is that uh, it's in bytecode and it's not in strings, yet you want to treat it like it's in strings, so it's kind of annoying. So there's a couple of things that we can do. Um, we can just convert it to a string. We can also do, uh, like we can decode it. Um, so for example, uh, data equals data dot decode. And then we can print, uh, print, ooh, almost tried to write Python 2 data or er, information there. Print data like that. Um, and we can even do string data. We could try to do something like that. So let's go ahead and save and run that just, just to see what, what happens to ourselves. Uh, agree, exchange, Huobi, Huobi, whatever their name is. We've read. We did print, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, my shell is very angry, probably at the amount of data that we're passing through. It's a, it's a substantial amount of data, um, all of this. <laughs> so, okay. So that's the basic data set here. Now, I was hoping I could scroll up a little bit, uh, but shell is angry. So let's just go. Oh, no, I got rid of everything. Um, okay. So let's go to Kinter Mega Series here. We are on 22. Let's bring that back up. My goodness. <laughs> 22. Okay. And scroll back down to animate. Uh, if we can find it. <laughs> okay. So uh, the let's see if we can get away with uh, just doing using decode here. So now we're gonna say data equals JSON dot loads data. Let's see if we can do that. Agree, exchange, oh by. Hopefully no errors. Looks like we might get away with that. That's good. Because the old version I was using was very hacky and I'm not quite sure why I was doing that, but okay. Uh, so now we've got the data loaded in. Let's see if we can get away with the rest. So date stamp is going to equal uh, NP array of, uh, let's see, uh, data. Sometimes I have data zero in here, but let's do, um, well, I guess I wouldn't. Yeah, because it's, it's basically in two large lists. This is probably why I had it coded the way I did. Because basically what we have here is a gigantic list of timestamps and then a gigantic list of prices. Um, let's see if we can do it anyway, though. Uh, we probably can't reference. Let's see, let's see if we can do this. Data zero uh, dot as type date time sixty four s not two. Uh, then we'll do date stamp 
equals date stamp dot date stamp. Oh my goodness, date stamp dot to list. And let me, let's go ahead and do print date stamp five. Okay, so we're running, here we go. Exchange, will we agree, we're all happy there. Uh, hopefully to five would be uh, acceptable. Okay, so here we have uh, the first five date stamps. So, so far we are still getting away uh, with what I'm hoping we're gonna get away with, uh, not writing horrible hacky code. So that's good. Now, uh, let's go ahead and we're gonna uh, call uh, on pandas now. So we're gonna say df for data frame equals pd dot data frame. And uh, so we've got parameters here and then curly braces, date, oops, date time, colon date stamp now uh, let's see uh, we're next we're gonna say uh, DF price DF price so we're assigning the a price column here and we're gonna say that is equal to data one then we're saying DF Volume, so the volume data is data two. Then uh, DF, I have symbol here. I'm not really sure that symbol's necessary, but that's fine. Uh, BDC USD, and then uh, we're gonna say, we in order to plot this stuff, we have to convert to MPL dates. So we're saying DF MPL date, equals df uh, date time and then we're going to do dot apply and we're going to use a lambda throwaway function here so lambda date colon m dates dot date to num and then in parameters here it's going to be date dot to underscore pi date time empty parms and then we're all set there now we're going to say uh, df equals uh, df dot set index. So this is setting like the main you know column basically. So set index, and we're going to set the index to this date time column that we just generated. Um, and that's that makes it really easy to plot things with with pandas. So if you set the index as the date time, you can just basically say uh, pandas plot this stuff and it would it would plot it. We're not going to do it that way, but it's useful to have that. Um, and we might end up using it down the road. But anyway, df set index date time. And then we're going to go ahead and say, uh, so we can uh, display it, we're going to say last price. And last price equals df price negative one. So the negative one element <laughs> and now let's go ahead and plot this stuff so we're going to do a dot plot underscore date uh whoops a dot plot date uh the the date that we're going to or the dates i suppose that we're going to plot is df mpl date so that's our x uh our y is going to be df price and then we're going to use the light color. It needs to be a capital C. Light color, and then label equals price. And this is a lot of data, so we're going to go ahead and use MPL date minus 4500 colon, and then same thing with price minus 4500 colon. Um, label price. That's good. Uh, then we're going to take the same axes locators as we have before, so that right there. And so we'll go ahead and highlight this, copy. Uh, let's just let's paste that. And then uh, title. We'll just copy and paste this code as well. Copy, come down here, paste. This is Huobi. BDC prices last price uh, is actually we just use this last price variable that we created so 
Uh, we do need it to be a string still, so actually like this. So string last price, set the title, um, and that's basically it. Uh, so let's go ahead and save and run that real quick. <laughs> See how well that works. <laughs> if it works. I'm still a little concerned because I did try to get around that the original time I programmed it. Uh, so it looks like it worked, actually. Um, so you will at least notice uh, we don't have... Uh, what we oh, interesting. I just caught that now <laughs> with our dates. Uh, we need to have percent %m, percent %s, otherwise it's treating it as something we want to toss in on the dates. Everything else looks pretty good, but percent %m, percent %s. Uh, and now we're going to have to fix that on everything else. <laughs> So percent m percent s percent m percent s. Hopefully that's the last one. Nope, we got one more. Percent m percent s, and that that should be it. Okay. So um, apparently we also have volume data, but looking at the vol or this information from C of BDC, uh, it looks like all zeros. So don't see any volume there. And that's interesting because we pull from Huobi. Um, let me just see if I plot volume. I seem to recall Huobi doesn't give volume data for whatever reason. Let's go to Huobi here. And yeah, last price, there's no volume data there. As opposed to like the other uh, exchanges, we have last price and volume for all of them. Um, so anyway, yeah, we don't for whatever reason, but I have like a volume thing. I might just superimpose volume there for to normalize the data like later on. That's probably what I'm doing. Uh, it's been a while since I've programmed that. Uh, but I'm really glad <laughs> that I did not use uh, what I, in my original code, uh, I was not decoding, I was converting to string. So I was doing like data equals string data. And then to get rid of the B from the bytecode, I was doing dot replace, um, I think it was, you know, dot replace colon B like that with nothing. And so we were converting to string and then removing the, the Bs from bytecode. So not the best code there. I really was, I'm glad that uh, decode word. I'm surprised, I, I don't know why I coded that. I, that's weird. I thought like maybe there was like some error in the way or something and that's why I still had the code there, but I knew about decode. I don't know, that's lazy code, I guess. Uh, so anyways, uh, that's it. We got all the exchanges now on tick data and that was kind of hard just, you know, fitting all the exchanges. Um, uh, so we've, we've got that fixed now, hopefully, that we've got all the exchanges. And then from here, we're actually going to be continuing to use uh, the C of BDC API. Like I said before, I haven't really no intention to charge for like the basic pricing data. So you should be able to get by using this basic key equals one. Um, at the moment, I don't even think I'm checking for a key anyways. Like the only API I have is a basic API. But down the road, uh, to access the API, you might need a key, but I'll make sure one always gets some sort of basic data, maybe delayed data or something like that. Uh, but I'll make sure that hopefully this tutorial always plays through. If anything ever changes, let me know, and I'll do my best to get this back online. Uh, but it shouldn't. So anyway, um, so that's that. Uh, so yeah, so stay tuned to the next video. Uh, we're gonna add uh, basically the, all the other time frame data. So this was tick, but we all want, we want to throw in some of the other uh, uh, data sets and stuff. So with this, you can kind of see how that's going to uh, end up. But luckily, it's all normalized, and I think this is why it's normalized, or why I threw in volume here, is because the data is completely normalized across all exchanges. So you don't have to write like custom code for Huobi. So I wrote it on my uh, website, so you don't have to ever again. So anyway, uh, so stay tuned for those videos. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys have any questions or comments on this video, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, the subscriptions, the donations, and until next time.